All right, so we've already said that drawing models probably isn't going to be your choice for everything, especially when your denominators start getting really big or when they're odd. Sometimes it's difficult to um, break your one whole up into even pieces or equal pieces. So we have another way that we could look at it. So I have four ninths, and I need to compare that to a seven elevenths. And I've already decided that I'm not very good at breaking things up into um, nine equal parts and 11 equal parts. So instead, I want to convert those numbers into decimals. If you remember, we said that decimals show parts of a whole, just like fractions show parts of a whole. And we already know how to compare decimals. We line the numbers up by their decimal points and we start looking at the greatest place value, right? You, we've done that since the beginning of the year. So if we convert these fractions into decimals, then we can just compare the decimal numbers, all right? Now, think back. We said that all fractions are really division problems. So if these are division problems, all I need to do is that division problem to turn it into a decimal point. All right, so this is 4 over 9, and the division problem we would do would be 4 divided by 9. Okay, this is 7 over 11. The division problem we would do is 7 divided by 11. Now, hopefully you're noticing that I need to take a number and break it up into a groups and my divisor is greater than my dividend. Well, that's because when we get our answer, it's going to be less than one, okay? Now, we did this when we were dividing with decimals. We did this. We said nine goes into four. Well, it doesn't go into four, right? So we needed to put the decimal point there, put a zero behind, and then bring that decimal point up and now keep working. So how many times does 9 go into 4? Well, that was a 0, but how many times does it go into 40? Well, I know 9 times 4 is 36. And then I would have 4 left over when I subtract. Well, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to put another 0 and bring it down. And I'm going to say, how many times does 9 go into 40? Well. That's going to be 4 again. And remember when it repeats like this, we have a repeating decimal, and we can just put a bar over it and say, hey, that's going to go on forever, right? Okay, so I have 0.44. I need to know what this is to see if I can compare it. So 11 doesn't go into 7, but we're going to put a decimal and a 0, and we're going to say, how many times does 11 go into 70? Well, I know 11 times 6 is 66, right, with 4 left over. And guess what? I don't have to go any farther. If my goal is to compare these two numbers, then I'm set and ready to do it. Because look, if I line them up by their place value, it doesn't matter what comes after this 6, because I can already compare right here. I'm going to compare that 4 and the 6. The 4 is smaller than the 6. So that means that my 4 ninths is less than my 7 elevenths. I've changed them. I've converted them into decimals. And I didn't even have to finish the division problem because I had enough to compare right there in the tenths place. All right, let's look at that 3 sevenths and 5 elevenths. Let me get a new sheet of paper. 3 sevenths and 5 elevenths. If I have 3 sevenths, that's going to be 3 divided by 7. And 5 elevenths, that would be 5 divided by 11. Right? Now, 7 doesn't go into 3, but I'm going to put that decimal in a 0. I'm going to bring that decimal up. 7 doesn't go into 3, but it goes into 30. Well, I know 7 times 4 is 28, and I have 2 left over, okay? Let's see what happens if I come over here. If I put a decimal and a 0 and I bring that decimal up, 11 into 5 doesn't work, but 11 into 50 is 4. 
4 times 11 is 44 with 6 left over. Now, this time I cannot stop because look what happens. I have 0.4 and 0.4. If I line those up, they're exactly the same. So I don't have enough information yet. So I need to go out one more digit. So I'm going to put another zero and bring it down. And how many times does 7 go into 20? Well, that's a 2. Right? And if I subtract, I'm going to have 6 left over. And then I come over here and I'm going to see if I get something that's different than 2. So I'm going to put my 0 and bring that down. And I say, how many times does 11 go into 60? Well, that's a 5. And now I can stop because I don't have the same digit anymore. So this is going to be a 0.42 and this is going to be a 0.45. And it doesn't matter what comes after it because I can already start comparing right here. 2 is less than 5. So that means my 3 sevenths is going to be less than my 5 elevenths. And all I've done was I've done the division problem because every fraction is really a division problem. I've done the division problem to turn it into a decimal. And then I've compared the decimals.